Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 44th and Broadway. Our address is 4401 West Broadway. Our regular hours of service are 10 a.m. We have our morning Bible study. 11 a.m. We have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. We have our Sunday evening worship. Also, on Wednesdays, we have midweek Bible study service at 7 p.m. The Western Church of Christ also presents a call-in Bible talk show called More Bible Talk. More Bible Talk is presented on WLLV. That is 1240 on the AM dial. More Bible Talk is presented on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The call-in show allows people to call in and their Bible questions are answered in a Bible manner. The Western Church of Christ also has a website. The website is www.westncoc.com. Feel free to use this website as you can retrieve sermons that are presented from the pulpit. We offer it in video format as well as in audio format and streaming data. Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 11 to verse 13. That is Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 11 to verse 13. And it reads as follows. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I just read Romans chapter 10, verses 11 to 13. And let us uh, cut off our cell phones. Let's use the certain services. And this will be posted on the book of books if you can look at it again. Yeah. First hymn this morning's worship service is page 230. Page 230. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen. Page 230. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Oh. 
Son Jesus, who yes. is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We thank thee, Father, for bringing us thus this fall. Amen. And we thank thee, Father, for all things that we do that are pleasing to thee. Yes. We ask strength, Father, for thee and wisdom from thy word, mm -hmm. the Holy Bible. Help us, Father, to be diligent in reading it, applying it to our lives as we are allowed to live upon this earth. Mm -hmm. Help us, Father, to always carry the light to those that are in darkness. Yes. And being able to expound to them the things they must do in order to be saved. Mm -hmm. Righteous Father God, we thank thee that we living examples yes. of what our son has done for us. Yes. How he has came down upon this earth and, and died upon the cross and shed his blood, Father, for forgiveness of our sins yes. and the purchase of the church Matthew. that we all are members of. Yes. Righteous Father God, we are so grateful unto thee for, for allowing us to be an example to those that are yet unlearned. To be an example to those who are wandering around knowing not what to do. We're capable of following And when they, we see them, we can be that uh, saving power for them. Yeah. We can throw out our lifeline by telling them about word, how that son loved us, and how he died for us. Yes. Righteous Father God, we pray for those who could not be here because of physical illness. Yeah. But we also pray for those who have uh, mental, I mean spiritual illness. Mm -hmm. We pray, oh Father, that there might, uh, something might happen in our life. They might remember that they are our children and come back before it's everlasting and coming too late. Righteous Father God, we thank thee for all things in this life. In our Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
we come together on this morning, continuing to give God thanks for all that he has done for us, all that he will continue to do for us as well. Amen. On last week, we looked at part one of what will you do with Jesus? What will you do with Jesus? Mm -hmm. And as we looked at the scripture, we found that there were some that would deny him, as Peter did. Some will turn him over to the angry mob, as Pilate did, in order to be crucified. But today, as we continue to look at the Word of God, and we ask ourselves, what will we do with Jesus? Mm -hmm. What will we do with Jesus? Many times that's what we need to consider. is not what the next man will do, but what will you do, or what will I do. Yeah. So here in Romans chapter 10, the verse is 11. Romans chapter 10, and the verse is 11. Understanding that we all have a responsibility to do exactly what God tells us to do. And there are many that we have come in contact with that are doing exactly that. They're sharing God's word every opportunity they get. And so Paul writes here to the church of Rome and he says, so the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Everyone that believes in him. Verse 12 of Romans 10, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all. Bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord yes. will be saved. Yeah. I believe we need to examine this just for a moment and understand that there is no one singular thing that saves you. Not one. Well, how can I say that and, 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 and be a, a, a preacher? How can I say that and be one that calls myself a, a Christian? Well, I say that because of what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. Look at it again, because I believe that many people miss this. For he says again in verse 11, for the scripture says, that's the word of God. Amen. Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. So it is belief not an important part in doing what God wants one to do? Yes, very important. But not only belief we find in this passage here, but we also find that he says, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to examine and find out what is this calling all about? What is this calling all about? I'm going to tell you what it's not about. 
It's not about that individual that said, Lord, Lord. If you find it in Matthew chapter 7, and verse 21. And what is that? That's an individual that's all in on the Lord. If you continue to read there, turn, if you would, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. And I want you to see exactly why I say it's not that. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. You hear that? Does the Bible contradict itself? No. Not God's word. Amen. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. That's what that calling is all about. Doing what the Father tells us to do. That's the only way that we're going to be saved. Yeah. And so what that entails is not just believing, not just calling, not just hearing, but it entails all that God commands us to do in order to be saved. Mm -hmm. That's Bible. That's Bible. We talk about 24 plus things that saves us. And so if there are 24 plus things that saves us, we ask ourselves, which one can we leave out? <laughs> can you leave out believing there in that passage of Romans chapter 10? No, you can't be saved without believing. <laughs> can you believe? Can you leave out the calling there in that passage of Romans chapter 10? No, you can't leave out the calling. It, it deals with and involves obedience. We must be obedient unto the word of God. We must be obedient unto the word of God. Amen. In order to have salvation. We find in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. God is going to send his son back one day. Are you ready for that day? Are you ready for that day? There are many people that have, have gone on that were ready. Many others were not ready. But regardless, he is coming back one day. Yeah. So we might as well prepare for that day yeah. and do what we must in order to have salvation. 2 Peter 3, verse 8. But do not overlook this one fact. Beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Now, we, we should very well appreciate him for that, because how many of us have lived a perfect life since we have become children of God? How many of us? If you have, I don't have it on, but if I had it on, I'd take my hat off to you. <laughs> but I know that many Christians have fallen short. Amen. And we should appreciate the patience of God. That, that he has not sent his son back yet. The Bible talks about his promises. His promises are conditional not upon him, but upon us. So here you find that he is patient. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. And the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. 
will be exposed. How will you fare on that day? How will you fare on that day? Everything that we've done is going to be open before God. The time is coming. The time is coming. If he sent his son back right now, how many of you, how many of us would be exposed for doing something that is wrong? How many of us? See, we, we need to ask ourselves this question from time to time. How am I living? How am I calling on the name of the Lord? How am I showing others? How am I pointing them to God? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? Are we acting the way that we're supposed to be acting? Salvation is there for each one of us, and each one of us must do what we're supposed to in order to receive it. Amen. We must do those things. It's not a, if I won't do, when I feel like it, we must do what God tells us to do in order to have salvation. That's right. So we must accept it. We must accept what his word says. In the book of Revelation chapter 3, in the book of Revelation chapter 3, see, we can, we can talk to, to other Christians, and, and, and once we finish that conversation, sometimes we can tell whether or not they're doing right, or sometimes we can tell whether or not they're doing wrong. Sometimes. But God knows all the time. Amen. He knows all the time. Here in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 19. He says, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. Listen to that. Repent. Now, if I walked up to Brother DeMell and I said, Brother DeMell, keep on doing what you're doing since you're doing right in the eyes of the Lord. He would accept that. And he'd be like, thank you, Brother Melvin, for that, that, that encouragement. And tomorrow I walk up to Brother DeMell and I say, Brother DeMell, you need to repent. Brother DeMell may look at me and say, I'm not going to use those words. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to accept encouragement than to accept when somebody tells you that you're doing wrong, not realizing that that's encouragement as well. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Mel is not doing anything that I know of that's wrong. I, I just used him. You don't mind, do you, Brother Mel? <laughs> Because if, if, if you mind, I, I won't use you no more today. I'll wait till next week. <laughs> <laughs> but here, the, the Lord is telling them to repent. Saying that they are doing something that is not right. They need to change. That they are not calling the way they're supposed to be called. So he says, Repent. You continue to look there, and he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him, and he with me. Now, isn't that good? That when you hear that knock at the door, and you open it, and the Lord comes in. That's our heart. He, he's knocking. He, he, he wants to be a part of our everyday life. Yeah. He, he wants us to, to continue to call upon him. He wants us to continue to live for him. He wants us to continue to be an example that we need to be as he was. Amen. He wants us to do those things. But if there is a, a reason for us to repent, let, let's do that. Let, let's repent. Let, let's answer the, the gospel. Let's answer the calling. Let's do what we're supposed to do. Let's accept the word. Let's accept the word. 
that there's no better way to live than to live for God. Amen. No better way. So salvation is for those that are willing to, to accept it. The, the, the call is there and, and for you to open up your hearts and allow God to come in, allow Christ to be there, allow the Spirit to lead you according to the Word. All of these things are important and we need to realize that. So when, when we become His children, when we do what we're supposed to do, there is a reason in order for us to proclaim the Word of God. To listen to that part proclamation of the word and to be obedient. And we find in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 is, it is a great book to look at when we start talking about salvation, when we start talking about acceptance, when we start talking about sharing the word of God with others. Acts chapter 2 is a great book to look at. Why? Because this is where you find that gospel message preached on the day of Pentecost where many souls turned their lives over to God. They called upon him in obedience. They called upon him, did what they were supposed to do. Here we find again in Acts chapter 2, verse 22, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in the midst, in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified by the hand of lawless men, you crucified him. God raised him up, loosened the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Great proclamation of the word here. As Peter talks to the very one that crucified him, See, sometimes we need to understand when we think about what will we do with what will we do with Jesus? That these people they did not accept who he was. They did not fully understand what they were doing. But what did Peter do? Peter, by the, the leading of the Holy Spirit told them exactly what they had done. But it wasn't nothing that they could have changed because it says that this was a plan and foreknowledge of God. You know, we, we hear people say these days here, I, I couldn't help myself. Oh, you know, oh, that cake looks so good. I couldn't help myself. That's why I ate the whole thing. <laughs> I want, I want to let you know something. You could have helped yourself. You didn't want to. It was so good to you. But here, these men, they couldn't help themselves because this was the plan that God had already set forth. Amen. To crucify Jesus. The very one that created all things the plan was to crucify him, and that plan was carried out. And might, might I say that it was carried out very well. Yeah. There, there was nothing left undone. Yeah. They crucified him just like it had been prophesied in the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. <clears throat> they did what they were supposed to do, which brought about salvation. Gave them the opportunity to ask for forgiveness. Not by mere words, but by their actions. By them calling upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we can continue to read there in Acts chapter 2. Let's drop down to verse 36. 
Because Peter did not want them for one moment to, to think that he was talking to anybody else but them. He said, let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. Amen. This Jesus whom you crucified. Amen. You know, people always say, why, why you got to keep telling me what I've done wrong? Well, why you got to keep bringing these things up? You already told me one time, shouldn't that be enough? No. Peter, again, led by the Spirit, told them that this Jesus whom you crucified. See, by now, you would think that all of them would have wanted to change. But that's not the case. Just as it's not the case today when, when sin is pointed out to man that all men don't want to change. There's a lot of people that love sin. They love what they're doing. And you might as well. That's right. Because that's your life at that moment. If you don't love what you're doing, don't do it. You ever heard somebody say, I don't like my job. Well, who fills out that application? Who, who, who gets up every morning and goes to that job? You don't like it? Find another one. Don't quit that one first. You find another one first, and then you quit the one that you don't like. And there's a possibility that you're not going to like that one either. So you need to might as well just settle down, do what you're supposed to do. So we find here that these people that Peter was preaching to in verse 37, now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They were pricked in their hearts. Their, their conscience is bothering them now. And they said, Peter, you know, and to the rest of the apostles, brother, what shall we do? What shall we do? That's a great question, isn't it? When, when, when you're doing wrong, when it's been pointed out to you, what can I do in order to fix what I have messed up. Not what the next man, but well, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And here, it wasn't just one, but, but it was more than one. What shall we do? What shall we do? And Peter told them to repent and be baptized. You know, when, when, we, when we think about this idea of repenting, we have to know that it deals with turning and going into a different direction. Changing your mindset from, from, from doing wrong to doing right. Not, not that, you know, that basketball player that, that's running and he turns around a, a, three, a, 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 a complete 360 and he slams dunk. And we think that's amazing, don't we? But that's not what the Bible wants you to do. The Bible wants you to do a 180. Turn away from what's wrong and start doing what's right. Yeah. Here, Peter tells them to repent and be baptized. In Revelation chapter 3, he just says, repent. They didn't have to be baptized again. Just had to change the way that they were living to do something different. But there are those people. There are those people out in the world those people that are constantly doing things wrong, thinking that yes, maybe they're doing things right. Well, I want you to know today that if you're one of those people that says that you are a child of God and that you are following his word, but what you're doing you can't find in his word, what word are you following? Hmm. Has to be the word of some man. Well, I know it's in here because I've heard it somewhere before. A whole lot of people have said it, so it must be in here. I told you the story about a, a young man that was sitting in the back of the congregation, and, and we were uh, in Bible class, and we was having a pretty good class. And he was involved in that class. And he's doing like Brother Shelton is doing right now. He was flipping through his Bible because the, the subject came up. It's clear. Cleanliness, cleanliness, cleanliness is next to godliness. 
He said, I know he's in here. And he was looking and looking and looking and looking and looking. And after Bible class, he left and we never seen him again. <laughs> we wanted him to come back. I, I went and I knocked on his door. I was looking for him. I left him notes. You know, just because it sounds good doesn't mean that it's in God's word. Right, right, right. Doesn't mean that. So it's no harm in admitting that it's not there. It's just something that you've heard and you and you ran, ran with it. You continue to run with it. But we start talking about teaching the word of God. It has to be in here. That's right. It has to be in here. Mm -hmm. Paul. When Paul was persecuting the Lord's church, everything that he did, he did it with a pure conscience. And he didn't think anything was wrong with it. Until that day, that day when he met Jesus, he, he didn't see him. But what he seen was that bright light. And that bright light, when, when he seen that bright light, when it was shown and, and he dropped down and was blinded, he heard a voice. And that voice asked him a single question. Not where you're going. But Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? You know what Saul could have thought? And this is just a thought. He could have thought that it was Stephen calling him from the grave. Because he stood by when Stephen was being stoned in, in Acts chapter 7. But he didn't, he didn't say, Stephen, why are you saying these things? No, he said, Lord, Lord. And I want you to know when, when, when he said, Lord, he, he knew that this had to be a higher power. And within hearing that higher power, he said, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And the Lord told him what, exactly what he wanted him to do. And when he did those things, the Bible says there in Acts chapter 22, verse 16, that Ananias told him what obedience was all about. And by teaching him that, Ananias said to him, So why tarries thou? Arise and be baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. Arise and be baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. Now you go back to Acts chapter 9, and there in 22, he was just telling about his conversion. In Acts chapter 9, the Bible says in verse 18, and immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized. He rose and was baptized. So when Ananias said, Saul, why tarries thou? Arise and be baptized, call on the name of the Lord. Here, here is the answer right here. I'm not tarrying anymore. I'm going to do what is right. I'm going to go down into that watery grave and, and I'm going to rise, walk in the newness of life. And we never find in scripture we never find in scripture where Paul ever turned back we don't find it now he may have had his shortcomings along the way somewhere but the Holy Spirit didn't allow me to write that down we need to ask ourselves today what will we do with Jesus Paul listened to him, and he was obedient. There in Acts 2, the, the men of Israel that crucified him, 
it accepted responsibility for their actions, at least 3,000 being on that day. We know if we continue to look at the conversions, there were more later, but on that day, about 3,000 were obedient. In Revelation chapter 3, we find that there were some that were doing right and others needed to repent. What are you going to do with Jesus? Salvation is available. Again, God is patient. He's patient. But you know, one day, it's not that his patience is going to run out. It's just going to be time. Time for the sun to come back and for this world to end. For all to stand before the judgment throne and give an account of what they've done in this body. Yes. Whether good or whether bad. The time is coming. What will you do with Jesus? If you're here this morning and you're not a child of God and you want to become one, that opportunity is given to you to come forth and make the confession that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, being immersed in the watery grave of baptism. Baptism saved. Amen. Baptism saved. Hearing, believing, calling, baptism is saved. Can't have one without the other. That's right. Just like baby the cake. You have to do it the way it says. If you're here this morning and you have strayed away, we're asking you to come back. Asking you to come back because in the ark of safety is where we all need to be. When there's a storm coming, do you well some do. Most do not run out there into the storm, but some do. It's called the storm chase. What we need to be chasing is we need to be chasing the word of God. We need to be looking at what he says and we need to be doing what he tells us to do. If you're hearing this subject, we ask you to please come as we stand and sing the invitation hymn. 593.
going to sing the last song. There's a couple of things that I uh, forgot to mention with regard to Carla. She will be in University Hospital and it's laparoscopic surgery that, they, uh, that they'll be doing. And it's possible that she will be in the hospital two to three days after surgery. And she can only have one visitor. And, and I think that visitor has to be the same person. <coughs> so Evelyn Abernathy is one that's handling the, uh, the situation. And I forgot to mention that earlier. Yes. Yeah. Last lecture for morning worship service, page 63. Page 63. Same first and last. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we offer for. today. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the lesson that was brought to us Amen. from our wonderful preacher, Melvin Spencer. He does preach the word of truth. Amen. Father God, thank you for our sick and our shut-in of this church. Father God, thank you for each and every individual that is here today present and singing and praising you in song and prayer. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for our elders Amen. who keeps us in spiritual matters. If you need to know anything, go to an elder. He's able to tell you. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the blessings that you constantly Amen. bestow upon us. Amen. Every single day that we are alive, you bless us. Amen. We thank you, Father God, for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. who you sent down as an advocate for our sinful ways. Mm -hmm. He died knowingly and that is something knowingly thank you father god for that precious gift that you gave and as we leave your house today father god we ask you to keep a watchful eye on us Amen. keep us safe from harm Amen. keep us in your word Keep, you in, keep us in your ever-loving, everlasting arm. Amen. Continue to 
Let us be your children. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and ask these things. And thank you, Father, for being our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.